Coffee with a Geek Show. Today's special guest is Patrick Boylan. Welcome to the Coffee with the Geek Show. It is October of 2024. As always, the years, always, years, months, days just fly by. And I'm really excited to talk a little bit of music uh, this time. It's not something that I am usually talk about on my show. It's usually more of an ed tech piece, but music and ed tech, I think, are a great blend. So uh, Patrick Boylan is here, and he's going to talk a little bit about what he's working on, uh, he has a new app called MuseFlow, if I have that right. But uh, before we dig into Patrick's background and what he's up to with music education, uh, let's first just ask him, Patrick, welcome, first of all. And uh, let's dig into your Thank favorite you. cup of coffee. What What are you drinking these days? Favorite cup of coffee is in my Golden Girls Squad Goals <laughs> cup here. Um, nice. I, uh, I, at home, I'll usually just drink a, a big, large thing of this, uh, just a, a solid Sumatra with, um, a little bit of maple syrup in it. Or, awesome. or if I'm out and about like naturally October, I'll get a pumpkin spice latte, but I'll throw like, <laughs> and if it's in the morning, I'll throw like one or two extra shots of espresso inside of there. Um, sure. You've got to. That's uh, I am a caffeine addict for sure. <laughs> okay. So uh, it's interesting that you have the Golden Girls. I was just listening to a podcast, I think Dave Rubin's podcast, and he was talking about, you know, you should you should embrace the kind of Golden Girls. Uh, you know, you should carry a piece of each Golden Girl with you. You know, you should be yeah. the, you should carry the wildlife of of Blanche and the the kind of innocence of Rose and. Uh, he, he went into a couple different things, but yeah. good stuff. <laughs> totally. I hadn't and thought of that before. I honestly but. couldn't agree more. I mean, they are archetypes after all, right? <laughs> so true. I agree that we all should carry. I just love this, this squad goals cup. You know, it's like <laughs> they're all best friends and they've been best friends for so long and they live together. And you're like, well, exactly. that's, that's your squad. That's your goal. <laughs> you know, that's right. That's good stuff. All right, so um, Patrick, let's dig into a little bit of your background. Um, I've just read over a little bit of it, and I think you're going to kind of come at this from a little more non-traditional than us usually hmm. uh, people that I that I come across. But let's just talk about your background in education, and then again, I kind of call it your educational journey to to where we are now. Yeah. Um, well, grew up in Chicago. Um, went through the Chicago public school system. I uh, went to Glenbard West High School, uh, Hadley Junior High. I don't know why I'm going backwards. And uh, Lincoln Elementary School, <laughs> uh, just to see it all the way through. And then uh, after that, I graduated high school, um, fairly mediocre um, GPA. But I followed my, what my family's trajectory was, went to Illinois State University. Um, I started to uh, major in acting because I was, I was really... I was a, such a theater nerd back in high school. I did all the plays, all the musicals. Um, and so I tried that for a little bit. Didn't really vibe with the the curriculum. It got me too much in my head. Um, and it didn't build off of what I had already kind of established as my voice. So it tried to tear me down and rebuild me in the image of the actor that they wanted to make. You know, Not a fan of that sort of concept, especially in a liberal arts college. I think it works in a conservatory setting. Juilliard can do it. Yale can do it. Great. Big fan. But in like a liberal arts college where you have to go to physics afterwards, but you're like weeping because you're all you're like a, a shell of a human, you know, halfway through, you know, some movement class. You're like, no, I'm not. I don't think that works. Right. So I ended up leaving that because it got me too in my head, but I still was like deeply embedded in a the theater program there. I had already done a couple plays by the time I left, and I went over to music therapy because um, I had been playing piano my entire life. Um, started off in the traditional way. I'll go into that in, during my educational journey. Um, and then I, uh, so I did music therapy for a little bit, but that got in the way of the acting, you know, and the extracurricularly. And then I ended up with sociology. So I got a BS in sociology, and I'm such a fan of doing that because <laughs> actually my thesis was on what does a four-year fine arts education do for actors? So mm -hmm. I was like trying to prove to myself 
that I'd made the right choice. Because I interviewed a bunch, it was just a case study situation, and I interviewed a couple of actors that had graduated from Illinois State. And I basically found out that I did it right because they didn't learn anything in the classes, but they had learned everything in the playground setting that they were given during the plays, rehearsals, all the situations to you know do a play with some other you know graduate students directing or a faculty directing, like all of that, that's where they really learned how to hone their skills. So I was like, great, I proved to myself that I made the right choice. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, now I'm here. I'm in L.A. I'm uh, an actor for a little bit. I, uh, I uh, narrate audiobooks for a little bit. And, um, and I, I, I'm a musician. I play over at a piano bar here in Hollywood, sing and play there. And, and I uh, play over at a couple other restaurants here in L.A., background jazz. Um, and, yeah, and build, uh, I'm building Museflow with some friends. So, you know, it's interesting. I really liked kind of where you went with that answer, because I've always felt that, again, for, for me personally, I felt the high school musical was probably the most powerful experience I had as a student in high school. Interesting. But I also think it's, it's a great kind of work study because it truly is, uh, you know, as Jack Black said of School of Rock, one great, you know, rock performance can change the world kind of thing. And that really yeah. is you know, one great, you know, high school musical, I think, can be so powerful, but it's such a great way to see how different talents can all come together to make something really magical, I think. I think all high school musicals have their magic, mm. and uh, I think it's a really great learning experience, and I know I, I told all my kids, you know, if you do anything in school, do a play, and it doesn't matter what you are, whether it's behind the scenes, it's art, it's acting it's the music do something because it's it's about even just once you know because i think it's that important so i think you that really tapped into you know your answer kind of hit on that i think it's a great there, experience for all kids yeah you know? there's really something about learning in an extracurricular environment um that really hits home for me i learn by doing and i've known that about myself for a very long time um, I don't really learn well in a classroom setting. Um, I learn through the act of doing the thing that mm -hmm. I want to perfect. Every book I narrate, I'm trying to get better at it, right? And I love always also thinking about like, what are my goals here, right? What am I trying to accomplish? And my accomplishment, what, what I want to try to attain is never actually tangible. So I always try to set these goals that are like very high and literally unattainable. So I'm always working at something, for example, to narrate an entire book front to cover without having to stop because I messed up. Literally mm -hmm. impossible, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody can do that. And so I like setting those goals that are extremely lofty, but it always creates an ability to progress through doing, you know? I like that. I like that. So so let's dig into music and let's dig into how you've uh, created this this app, Museflow. Let's let's really dig deep into that. Yeah, so I like it. I like the I, learning possibilities too from it. Sorry. That's cool. No, I'm excited to talk to you, especially because I mean you're a teacher, right? Uh, and I'd love to hear how you think that um because because we're not trying everybody says we're disrupting the educational and you know, the ability to teach inside of a of a classroom and and we're not trying to take away the teachers from the process of music education. We think that is very, very important. Um, but yeah, I started off with the traditional piano lessons. You know, I, I got into piano around eight years old and I was like, mom, I really wanna, uh, dad, I really wanna like, I wanna play piano. We had a piano, you know, and I was, it was old and I had a family friend that played piano professionally in Chicago. And I was like, I was like, he was my mentor and I really wanted to play. And they're like, well, you know, it's a lifelong hap it's a lifelong hobby. You know, you're gonna have to stick with it. And I'm like, I want to do it. I really, really do. So I got into it. And my piano teacher, God bless him, tons of patience, right? Um, but he did the traditional way, which is the here's a new skill, uh, whether that's a new note or a new rhythm, a new time signature, whatever it may be, right? Here's a new skill. Now go and play that skill, go practice that skill inside of one song or two songs, if you're lucky. Go practice that to boredom, perfect it, 
really get it down, then come back to me a week later and I'll stamp the approval of perfection on it. And, and then we'll move on to the next one. I found that process to be very tedious. I found it to be very not engaging, not inspiring. And, uh, and so cut to eight years later, I barely had learned anything. <laughs> and my teacher retired, you know, Randy Balkis. Uh, retired, no fault of my own. He just like retired, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't, he didn't quit saying like, Pat, I'm <laughs> retiring, you know, he didn't give up on me, but <sighs> then I started like teaching myself really. I, I went away from the piano for a while and I got back to like my parent sheet music that was sitting on the piano, opened it up, found a little phrase that I really, really enjoyed, whatever that may be, some sort of pattern or motif, right? Grabbed that little piece out. I started close the sheet music and I just got it in my head and I started improvising around that, putting that in the multitude of contexts that I already knew. You know, I, I put it in my right hand, put it in my left hand, I inverted it, I put it in a new key, right? And then I did that over and over and over. I exhausted the context of what that skill could be applied to. And I just kept going with that. I kept finding these little phrases, these little pieces of music that I really enjoyed. and. Uh, and I wasn't, I didn't know this at the time, but I was basically taking the building blocks of, my parents had a lot of musical theater pieces. So I was taking the building blocks of what makes up that genre. And I was learning it in this improvised, non, not in a song necessarily, but I was kinesthetically like embodying those, those patterns. And so then when I saw those patterns pop back up in another piece, what, regardless of the composer, I was able to play that. And so I loved the idea of learning outside of the context of a song. And so, you know, cut to uh, what, like uh, four years ago, um, I was really tired of acting. I was getting really uh, bored with it. And I was just, I wasn't getting where I wanted to be. And um, I wasn't making enough money. I was still waiting tables. And, and so I, I, I he, you know, my wife is like, you know, why don't you go play piano? you're so good at it. Just go play and try. And, and so I did. And lo and behold, I started getting jobs. Um, and I think part of it is because I learned in this very unique way. And then two years ago, I was like, what if I made that way into an app so I could deliver that to everybody else? Right? These bite-sized chunks, not learning in a song, but learning in different contexts. And, uh, and so I brought that. And we, it's basically learning through sight reading which is the act of reading music at first sight, right? What if we were able to learn piano through sight reading as the engine of the curriculum? Brought that to my friend who's a music teacher, Stephen Gizzi, and he said, no way, I've had the exact same idea. And he pulls up all of these notes on his computer of like, what if AI was the way that we generated all that music that never repeated and you have to play through all this, all this music until you truly learn the concept and then you go apply that skill, that concept to pieces that actually get unlocked, songs that get unlocked inside the app, right? And then there's an exercise section where you can dive deeper into concepts and theoretical ideas, a little bit more of a lecture area where you can really kind of delve deeper and flesh out these like other concepts that you're interested in. That's the three-pronged approach to music education, technique, the sight reading trainer, songs, the repertoire library, and theory, those lectures. Cool. Love it. And so that's what we built. Found some technical co-founders, um, ended up going, you know, we have a bass player who's a data scientist. We have a back-end engineer who's obsessed with all of the databases that we're creating right now to pull these phrases from and analyze them. Um, and we have a classically trained pianist as our front end engineer. Um, all kind of happenstance, honestly, like we just kind of found them. One of them's a really good friend from Steven's hometown. One of them's a really fr like a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend from here in LA. And another guy I met at one of my background jazz gigs over at Maggiano's. I was, I was going to be playing piano one day on Sunday. This is one of my gigs. And he was playing some beautiful Chopin. He had just walk in and there's this guy sitting at the piano just playing beautiful. And I go up to the regulars and I'm like, who is this guy? They're like, we don't know. He just comes in sometimes and sits down. And turns out that I, went, I, I asked him, I'm like, do you want to go back and forth and trade songs? You know, we, you play a song, I play a song, you play a song, I play a song. He said, sure, that sounds fun. I live right down the street. I just come on in and play sometimes. And so we do that. Turns out he's a software engineer and I, I buy him dinner. I butter him up. I show him our pitch deck and he's obsessed. He loves the idea and he ends up coming on. 
Um, mm -hmm. So that's the idea though for the app, right? It's kind of a replication yeah. of how I taught myself how to play piano. And here I am a pre professional pianist. I was wondering if there's a possibility that other people might enjoy it. And it turns out that uh, people are, are really enjoying it. So we're it's so fun. It's so fun building it and getting it into people's hands and actually hearing their thoughts on it. You know, it's really cool. So let me try and encapsulate a little more. So I, I saw in one of the um, kind of pieces you sent me that it's kind of been called the Duolingo of music education. Is that yeah. kind of what you're thinking? So, um, and again, I, I work in a school, I love teachers and married to a teacher. <laughs> so nice. I don't want to say this is replacing teachers, but this is kind of giving a lot of like the, some of the deep skills of learning an instrument in this case, whereas Duolingo is, you know, doing uh, language, but it really does take the final frontier is the human connection of creating a piece of music with a band and, and again, having that interaction with a teacher, you know, guiding, uh, you know, a deeper level understanding. Is that my kind yeah, of so the, right? Yeah. The reason why it's it, people have been saying it's like very much like Duolingo is because we take the bite-sized chunks of the core concepts of how to play music, you know, new rhythms, new notes, whatnot. And then, and then we just break it down. We isolate that concept first in the sight reading trainer, right? And you're playing through it and you're just really exercising that new note. We gamified it a little bit. So you have to pass at 95% accuracy. You have to do four mm -hmm. phrases in a row at 95% accuracy at the goal tempo, the goal pace of the lesson to be able to pass that level. Right. Um, and then, and then you can go apply, you can go open up, you know, songs and whatnot. But that's why it's kind of, people have been saying it's the Duolingo of music education because it's those bite-sized chunks. Right. And we teach you in flow. We teach you in flow state where the challenge of that level, you can drop into wherever your skill set lies. The challenge of that level will meet your skill level. And it's, you're just pushing yourself right outside of that boundary of comfortability. And that's what we realize is flow state, you know? And, and that turns out to be a lot more engaging um, and, a, and a, a, a much more kind of visceral way of learning. You know, you can really kind of grok it and understand, okay, I'm actually learning this. Wow. And I'm literally seeing the percentage go up. I'm actually playing mm -hmm. better. And then you pass a level and a huge dopamine hit happens. There you go. Um, and yeah, we're not trying to replace teachers because here's the thing about music. We can teach you the technique of playing music okay we can do that for sure but the human element the why the how right why are you playing a piece of music that way why are you adding in crescendos from soft to, to loud why would you make it from loud to soft why would you do that and and that is something that i don't think any sort of ai or uh you know curriculum like ours would ever be able to teach you know the the interpretation aspect of music that is what humans connect with right mm -hmm. that's why we play music we're just getting you to a place faster in a more engaging way to start to do those to make those decisions we're just getting you faster we're getting you there faster yeah you know? Yeah, I love that analogy. Is it really just piano based? I mean, I'm 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 picturing because I haven't seen it live, but I'm picturing is it you know kind of keyboard skills on your device? Um, yeah, we're well right now. It's it's piano based. Uh, we want to make this for every common instrument. We want to make it for guitar, bass, uh, drums, singing. Um, and uh, and yeah, we're in the process of making other curriculum for for those instruments, right? Um, but ultimately, we would love to make this for clarinet, for for tuba, for sousaphone, for saxophone, for you know, uh, violin, viola. Um, that's and and it would be an accompaniment for these private teachers to be able to use. You know, go and learn levels one through three of Muse Flow, and then come back and we're gonna work on the songs that get unlocked together. We're gonna make decisions on those songs, mm -hmm. mark up the sheet music. And then, so again, it's just getting you to a place where yeah. you can start making those decisions. And again, that's where the joy of playing and that's where the joy of listening really is, you know? So it's really just a great, it's a great companion. Yeah, yeah. Of course you can learn how to do this on your own. There's a lot of self learners that are that we're are using Muslo mm -hmm. right now. Um, they don't want to have a teacher. They don't want to be in an institution. But 
they want to do it on their own. And yeah, they can do it all. You know, they're learning very technically for sure. But the cool things that you're learning is like failure is just not, it doesn't even matter anymore for them. Mm -hmm. I watched one of our users play a piece that they had never seen before and they got 60% of it wrong, but they didn't stop once. They stayed in tempo. They kept going failure after failure after failure after failure, just rolling off their shoulders. That's something that like I've never seen a curriculum do before, music education curriculum. But yeah, just for piano right now. And then we're going to be expanding this to pretty much all common instruments in the next you know, four to five years. Wow, great. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about platform. Is this uh, multi-platform? Can you use OS, PC? What, what yeah. can you put it on? Right now, it is, there's a little bit of a technical barrier. Um, we haven't made it into an app yet. We really wanted to get a proof of concept out into the world um, and then expand the features. And next year, early next year, we're going to start building this app. Um, so right now, you have to have a laptop, whether that's PC or Mac. Um, you have to have the a Chrome browser, Chrome or Edge. And you have to have a MIDI-compatible keyboard, whether that's 25 keys or a full-blown Clavinova um that is in your living room it doesn't matter as long as it's midi compatible and you have to jack that keyboard into your computer um, with a cable two things that are going to open this up it's going to be an app so you can use a tablet or a phone mm -hmm. the other one is going to be audio recognition which we've already got a killer audio uh recognition algorithm that we're that it that it's it's great it's just in development it's in beta right now we're still like working on it and perfecting it um, it's not ready to be put on the world just yet, but um, that basically means that you can put a tablet or your phone on your piano or on your keyboard and you don't have to jack it in. You know, uh, that's that's where we're going to. Universal accessibility is a huge tenant for us because um, we're we're in the market to revolutionize music education. That's that's really what we want to do, you know, um, and we need universal accessibility to be able to do that. That sounds awesome. And so let me ask the kind of nerd, nerdy teacher question. So uh, research data behind it. I mean, are you showing, can you show, you know, with data saying, yes, you know, this person did it through our app and got here. This person did it just traditional method and, you know, didn't go as far. I mean, are, have you got the biggest things? It's all anecdotal right now. <clears throat> um, we don't have a massive large data set just yet. Um, and so we can't say qualitatively, we can't say quantitatively that like our method is better. Um, but we are, we do know that we don't have any churn. Nobody has canceled their subscription since signing up. We do know from anecdotal uh, feedback from users um, that they're, they find it a lot more engaging than traditional methods of teaching piano. Um, they are, being taught those sort of meta skills of perseverance, of, of forgetting about failure. Failure is not even a part of the equation, really, you know, because there's just so much of it inside the app, but they're all very bite sized. And we care so deeply about positive reinforcement that, and, and progress. That's huge. We really emphasize, we're fairly Montessori in that way. It's like we care so deeply about positive, positive reinforcement on the progress of, of you know not perfection we, we don't care much about perfection we care about the progress that you're creating for yourself um we do know that people are loving the flow state aspect of this there some people are using this with their teachers yes you have eight-year-olds that are using this with their their private teachers but we also have people that are retired that after you know a day of doing whatever they want or or they're just they're you know in the midst of their late career and they're pretty bored at work and they come home and they turn on Museflow and they've already passed the curriculum that we have so far we have 26 levels so far and they've already passed it but what they do is they lower the the tempo by 1 beat per minute so they can't pass the level so they just are playing the infinite amount of music that pops up the infinite amount of music and keeps them in flow and keeps them in that constant pace locking in for 30 minutes a day in that sort of flow state is doing wonders for them they're loving that it's such a relief from their lives um so there are a lot of use cases and we're getting a lot of positive feedback here um which is really really cool yeah i love that idea and i love the 
idea that you're going to kind of, you know, an elderly population as well. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, I've kind of uh, dabbled in the VR space, you know, with, with Quest and, and that sort of thing. And think that also, I think, and I just saw an article in some uh, journal, I wish I had it in front of me, but uh, they were saying that they're using VR in uh, elderly care facilities, you know, to give them wow. a, uh, a you know, an integrated experience, which I think is, is fabulous, you know? Yeah. That's wild. I, I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw it very recently, but, uh, wow. Pretty okay. Cool. Pretty well, cool. Uh, yeah. You've given me a lot of great food for thought. I really think this you're onto something here. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised as you were talking about, I was like, boy, I can't believe no one else has thought of this yet. But I, I have a reason. I have a thought of this, right? I because yeah. I'm like, why haven't why has has this never actually been our main way of teaching music? You know? The reason why is because the technology has never been available. We need something to generate an infinite amount of music for you to play that never repeats. Mm -hmm. That's the key to this sort of methodology, right? And that's not possible without the technology that we've been implementing, that we've been using. Um, so, so yeah, like you would have to have so much sheet music already written for that to even be a possibility. And then also to personalize it too. Uh, later down the road, we're going to get into like machine learning and actual like analyzing the music that you're playing, comparing it to our source of truth of what you should be playing and finding the holes where you mess up this one sort of interval, for example, like in two notes, right? Back to back. Say you're messing that up constantly. Why? It doesn't matter, really. We can see that in the, in the patterns of how you're playing, that you're messing this interval up a lot. So what we'll do is just give you more phrases of music that exercise that one specific interval. So you can get that meta skill up a little bit. Uh, so you can get it to a level where it's comparable to the other skills that you're working. Um, so that sort of application, that sort of personalization, it's it it wouldn't be possible with sheet music written on a page. You know, you would need technology that we're that we're using to be able to do that. All right. Well, it is time. Uh, bottom of the hour. It's time for your speed geek questions. You ready for three of these? We'll just kind of it's a short, rapid fire answer. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, so here goes number one. So are you a gamer? I have a feeling I know the answer to this. And what's your game? You would be surprised. I'm not. <laughs> oh, okay. I am um, surprised. I I did not grow up with video games when I was younger. My parents didn't let me have them. Um, instead, they grounded me if I didn't practice piano. <laughs> so okay. uh, yeah, I never had a video game. But oh my gosh, do I love watching my friends play video games. I love watching them play video games, um, but no, I never played. It's interesting. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's go to what is your favorite social network? Instagram. It's got me. I know. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, glad. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. There's. I mean, I feel like I'm the only one, but I'm. I'm not. Yeah. You're. There yes, are just... tens of millions out there that do this. Come on. I know. What's your favorite follower? What are some follows that you really like? Oh, actually, I may, my use case for Instagram might be a little different than the majority of other people. I I really only look at my friends' stories. Oh, that's awesome. So, so I, I don't really like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I respond to like what they're doing and I see what they're doing. Sometimes I'll like, I follow a couple of celebrities and whatnot, but, um, or like people that I might meet out and about uh, here in LA. And so then when I actually see them, I have some sort of like connection, though it is artificial, I'll right. know what they're up to. And so I'm able to like actually butter them up a little bit. But <laughs> most of it is my friends, I, you know, seeing their stories and just going through them. You know, I curate that list. Very specific. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's what a nice about, way to say. What about connected. you though? Like, uh, well, you know, I, I love pranks, you know, I, I'm, okay. I'm always <laughs> yeah. fascinated by like, people getting caught unaware of something, you know, it could be sure. you know, like that guy who who dresses up like a plant, you know, and like, yeah, lunges out at people that always cracks me up just to see how people react. And, you know, uh, I've, I'm always fascinated by how people react when they come across something unexpected. Dude, were um, you an, an America's Funniest Home Videos person? 
Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Our, our family yeah. was too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, absolutely love that stuff. And even going way back before that, long before your time was, what was a Candid Camera? I don't know if you remember that. Oh, my I've gosh. I've heard of that show, but that's I've heard oldie. of it, yeah. That's yeah, a yeah, super yeah. oldie, yeah. Um, so I like uh, any type of video like that. I do like, um, there's this There's this young woman named Haley Fitzgerald, and she is so funny. I just, I, I just love something that's going to make me laugh or intrigue me, you know, uh, laughter, I think is the best medicine. So I, I do like anything that's positive and upbeat. I try and stay away from a lot of political things, but I do like, um, you know, keeping, like you said, keeping track of your friends. There's also like, I come across these ones where, uh, for some reason, I'm sure it's an analytic that, um, you know, like animal rescues, especially dogs, oh, like yeah. they'll find these dogs like out in the road and somebody will, you know, rescue it and take it yeah. home. And, the, you know, the turnaround story is always, you know, magical to me. I just, I love those. Speaking of good news, there is a, uh, a one channel that I follow, Good News Networks or Good News Network or something like that. And it always gives you just like a very positive story every day. Um, oh, nice. That's an Instagram, Instagram handle that you can, that you can follow, Good News underscore network i think is what it is oh cool um so yeah highly that. recommend that if you want more positivity in your life yeah yeah i do cool. yeah instagram is definitely the way i kind of recharge a little bit so totally all right so you. on that note let me ask your last one and that is what is your favorite way to unplug from technology uh hiking camping um being outdoors i love a good river let me and there are you. places in la to escape to oh yeah i mean we got joshua tree a couple of couple of hours away uh we got ojai mm. which is a couple of hours north even just right in my back back door we got the um the uh los angeles um county uh it's it's the la it's a state park um okay but i don't i don't remember it's the la forest preserve or something like that literally that might be it los angeles forest preserve um that's a whole mountain range that that you can go camping in that's 20 minutes away from me Wow. So really quick, then you can get out and out and about. Yeah. Um, I, definitely being outside and definitely like I'm an extrovert. And so I get recharged by my friends. Um, so I love I love just hanging out with people and talking deep. That's fabulous. And I've been to Joshua Tree actually last year. Oh, really? My, my daughter moved out to San Diego. So I drove out there with her and um, we went through, she's a big hiker too. So she's like, dad, I, I got a hiking spot all along the way. And Joshua tree was one of them. I loved it, but it's, you know, that, uh, that dry kind of deserty, yeah. yeah. uh, spooks me a little bit being a Northern boy, you know, um, <laughs> it, you know, when, it, when I see this dry, hot, just as <laughs> makes me, makes me spooky, <laughs> spooks me out a little bit. I, I know what you mean. Uh, cause I'm from Chicago. Yeah, so like, so it's so, you're right. It's so dry and there's a calmness to it. That's eerie. There's not a lot of wind that happens, you know? So, exactly, you yeah. know, you can walk through this, this ecosystem It's truly an ecosystem, right? You walk through this ecosystem, but it's all seems so static. It's very weird. You're right. Yeah. Oh, I know what you mean when it comes yeah. to spookiness. Yeah. You're right. All right. Well, Patrick, thank you so much. This was really enlightening. Uh, good luck with the app. We'll definitely uh, keep in touch on that scale because uh, we've got a great music department here. And I don't, and I mean that truthfully, uh, where I live in right. Fredonia, it's not a good edu uh, music education department. It's a great one. So uh, nice. I know I'll be talking to them about it because they're, they're tech geeks too, and they love all kinds of cool stuff. So, yeah, I'd love to hear what that, cause like we, we are in the midst of uh, talking with institutions and getting this into like, um, piano classes, you know, I don't know if you guys have a, a classroom of just like rows and rows of keyboards. But we uh, do. We, did, we have yeah. a MIDI keyboard area. Yeah. 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 So did we. And so this is one of those tools that we can get into schools like right now um, and have some students uh, kind of l learning through this sight reading flow state sort of way, you know. Awesome. Um, yeah. Well, I'd love to talk with them if ever there's okay. a possibility. You bet. We can arrange that. Very cool. Thank you so All much. Right, Patrick. Thank you. This yeah. has been a great, great conversation and good luck. Thank you. All right.